Hey everybody, I haven't done a tutorial for a while and I wanted to get back to it. I've been working on some other projects. This one, unlike some of my other tutorials, is not really introductory or beginner. This is going to be more of an intermediate or advanced uh, tutorial for two reasons. One, I'm going to be using a daily build of uh, FreeCAD version 19 uh, or 1.0, whatever they end up calling it. And I'm also using an add-on workbench called Lattice 2. A Lattice 2 is a, a very powerful workbench, has a lot of different features to it. And to be completely honest, I barely understand it myself. Uh, I'm just learning it now. And so this is going to focus on one particular feature for a specific kind of application uh, that I haven't found a, a different way to do in FreeCAD. So let's jump on into it. So this is my MakerBot uh, Cupcake CNC, my first 3D printer, which is kind of a museum piece now. It certainly isn't used at all. Uh, but when I got it and put it together, I, I was kind of fascinated with these, uh, these joints that they use in here. It's a captive nut in kind of a mortise and tenon uh, arrangement. So this is all laser cut wood and it, it has these uh, tenons that fit into the corresponding mortise joints in the panel and then a screw passes through into this kind of t-slot and it provides a really rigid structure uh, and I've wanted to use this kind of thing for uh, modeling some laser cut acrylic parts in the past but modeling it is is kind of tricky so what's the big deal right I mean uh, modeling something like this in the part design workbench wouldn't be terribly difficult uh, it, it's not a it, complex sketch uh, and you'd be right, the, the challenge is that when you want to have a feature like this uh, that appears in a bunch of different bodies uh, and maybe a lot of different places within those bodies, then modeling uh, you know, a feature that both removes material here and adds material relative to that spot and then repeating that all over the place can get pretty cumbersome. In fact, it can be a real pain in the ass. The, the, the problem is that, you know, even for something as simple as this, you might have 20 or 30 constraints, and then you're repeating that work all over the place. Uh, and you might think about, you know, like sketching out a kind of a cookie cutter and then doing a Boolean subtract on your model. And you could do that as well, but in this case, like I said, we're removing material in one spot and adding it in another. So th there's a lot of different uh, kinds of joinery, panel joinery like this. And, uh, um, and the variation that I'm going to use for this project actually uh, removes the tenons uh, and just uses a, a, a flat surface and the friction between the parts. And the reason for that is that uh, it makes it a little simpler in my design, makes it simpler to demonstrate in a video. But the same technique could be used if you want to use the tenons, and I'll, I'll kind of point that out in the video a little later. So this is, is the model that I've got, and you can see that it has uh, uh, about six or seven different parts, and they fit together. And I've already modeled the, uh, the holes the screw will pass through. The only part that's missing is the T-shaped hole in the corresponding panels that will hold the nut captive. So the first step is to create a new body uh, in the model. And I'm, I'm just going to call this uh, T-base. And then I'm going to do a sketch on the, uh, uh, on the XY plane. And really this can be anywhere. I'm just going to place it off to the side here and uh, I'm just going to do a rectangular base and I'll make these sides equal and I'll set a size on them at about uh, 30 millimeters and, uh, and then I'm just going to lock a corner and that will give me a fully constrained sketch and I'll pad this out to uh, three millimeters because that's the thickness of the plastic that I'm using. It's really not important. Now, th th this uh, base shape is um, pretty unimportant. It it's basically going to get ignored, but it serves as the base for the rest of the features that I'm going to add, which is what removes and adds material. So I'm going to select the top surface and do a sketch on this surface. And, uh, and then I'm going to draw 
using my polyline tool and I'm going to draw my little uh, cross-shaped cutout. And now I'll add some constraints to set the size. Okay, I'm down to one uh, a degree of freedom left, and that's just the position on this side here, uh, which is pretty unimportant for my purposes, but I'll go ahead and lock this uh, dimension. And now I can uh, pocket that through to create the cutout. Okay, now that I've modeled my uh, my cutout feature here, I need to give it a, a, a handle or a, a placement so that I can refer to the, the whole feature uh, with a location. So we'll switch to the Lattice 2 workbench, and that's done by adding a uh, attached placement. Uh, it can be also done with this button on the toolbar. And with nothing selected, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my uh, T-Base object uh, is the active body. So I'm going to toggle that. And then with nothing selected, I'll uh, press the button to create the attachment. And uh, in this case, I want to put that placement kind of right between these two uh, vertices. So I'll select the first one and, uh, and then the second one and the align 0YZ, and you kind of got to play with, uh, these are the, all the different attachment modes that you've probably seen elsewhere in, uh, uh, in part design. And uh, uh, you can play around, you can use any of the attachment modes, whatever works uh, for you. And what I've found playing with this is uh, the align 0YZ with those two vertexes selected here. And then uh, I just adjust my Y position by 1.5 millimeters because I know that the, the width of this is 3 millimeters. And uh, so I need to set it directly in the middle. And you'll see that it kind of looks, uh, um, I've got my yellow side up, so my orientation is now correct. And uh, I'll say uh, apply OK. And the important thing is that your placement needs to be inside the body. Uh, if you do the same thing, you could make a placement without this being the active body and the placement will be put outside and the whole thing won't work. So make sure your placement occurs inside the body. Okay, now um, I'm going to turn off everything except my base plate in here. So I'll turn off some of these other parts so we can focus on the uh, uh, the base plate and what I want to do is replicate this feature in about four places around here so to do that um, I'm going to select first I'm going to make the base plate into the active body and I'm going to select the top face and I'm going to create a sketch on it and add a couple uh, reference lines or some reference geometry here Okay, now that I got my reference geometry on here, I'm going to draw a set of uh, L-shaped markers, and I'm going to use the polyline tool to do that. And the important thing here is that your direction goes the same way every time. So in this case, what I'm doing is uh, we're going to pretend I'm walking around the part uh, in a clockwise fashion, and so I'm going to move forward and turn left. And uh, the same thing for the next one here. I'm going to move um, forward and turn left. And I'll do two more on this side, moving forward and turning left. So again, we're going clockwise around. These are reversed one from the other, but I'm always from my starting point moving forward and then turning. It's upside down in this case, but I'd be turning left. All right, and, uh, and then I'm going to make sure that my um, segments are all uh, straight. Now, the actual length of the segment doesn't matter. Uh, what we're going to concern ourselves with is the position of these, uh, these center vertexes because that's where we're going to uh, set an attachment. 
So I'm going to just I'm going to roughly set those right now and close this and I'm going to turn off my uh, uh, solid so we can look at just the uh, the sketch that I created there and we'll look at it from uh, top down. So those are the four L-shaped markers that I put on and I'm next going to switch back to lattice and put another uh, attachment. I want you turned off please. And uh, I'm going to select the center vertex and then I'm going to select the two segments like that. And I don't want that one. Okay, so now what I should have is the, the vertex and then the two edges that make up that. And, uh, and now I'm going to play around with these different attachment modes here. And uh, you can see we're looking at the bottom side. And, uh, and a combination of attachment modes plus adjusting these, you should be able to get it to uh, look... I have to go 180 degrees. Okay, so now again, I'm looking down on my kite, I have the yellow side up, and it's aligned pointing out. And I'm only going to do the first one because we're going to use the rest of these as an array to create this. So I have to get the, the placement and the orientation of the marker correct on this one here. And then... I can um, select this one and do the drop down gives me an array of attached placement and you'll see that the other three were created. If you start with the first one that you drew, you, you'll get uh, all of them created. If you start with one of the other ones, uh, you may have to come into this placement subsequent and there's this base property here. Uh, excuse me, cycle property, and you, if you change it to cycle periodic, then regardless of which one you start on, it'll finish off the rest of them for you. Uh, but as a matter of course, I usually start with the first one that I drew, and then uh, it automatically creates the, the rest of them for me just fine. Okay, so you can kind of see what we're doing here. We've got a marker that indicates the position of this, and then we've created the markers or the placements to indicate where the destination that we want that feature to go. So I'm going to turn my pocket back on here, or my, my solid. And now comes the uh, kind of the magic in this. And you have to do the selection exactly right. So um, going through the tree here, here's my, my uh, base object with its placement. And here is my face, solid, the array of placements that has the single placement underneath it in here. So what I'm going to do is select this top level object. I'm going to hold the control key and select the placement. Continue holding the control key and select the array. So I've got three things selected in that very specific order. Base object, placement underneath it. So it's like, this is what I want to copy from here to there. And now uh, I should have this button here, which is the lattice part design pattern command. And uh, it will, I believe, automatically give you this tool button in the part design workbench as well. So it's the same button in two different, uh, two different places. And if I press that, see that it created the uh, the cutouts but it also embedded the rest of this shape so what I can do is select this lattice pattern you should see it nested there's my original placement the array of placements and now the pattern that it created and if I select this and scroll down in the list there is a uh, a property here that says skip first in body and if I set that to true, what it's doing is it's skipping the first feature in the base object, which was my, my base pad. 
And instead, what it's doing is playing out everything that follows. So all uh, after the first pad, the first thing that we did was create the pocket for the cutout. And it replicated that in each of these positions. And it's not doing like a Boolean copy. It's actually replaying these features in each of these locations. And these locations are still tied to the original sketch uh, that I, where I drew those L-shaped figures. So if I open this up, I can uh, drag these things around. And I want to make sure that I don't like cross my line. I want to keep the orientation uh, of these things the same. But for instance, I can set the distance on this. Uh, let me set that at 30. I need to make sure that my orientation stays intact. And let's go ahead and make these two symmetric across this position or across this line. Okay, and again, the, the, the length of these lines don't, doesn't matter. And uh, um, I, I could set these others as well, but for right now, I'm just going to leave them as they are. And I'll close this, and you'll see that the positions of my feature is already updated. And uh, if I turn on my side panel, you'll see that my feature lines up now with with the holes where the bolt is going to go through. One of the cool things with this is that everything here is still parametric. So if I go back and make my uh, my base object, my uh, T base object, the active body, and let me select this and do a sketch on this face. I'll add a couple of reference lines here and I'm going to draw so that my, uh, just draw a rectangle on here so I'm locking to my reference line and the base line here. And uh, I'll do another one like that. And let me just make these the same length. Okay, now I could fine tune and get the position right here, and I'm not going to worry about that for the video. But if I close this and then pad this out, you'll see that the same feature replayed in all of the positions. So if I wanted to do that uh, uh, actual uh, tenon version of the mortise and tenon feature, I could do that just by updating the uh, uh, the, the reference uh, feature that we designed on this base object. And the subsequent one is updated. And again, everything is still parametric and live. Now I can do the same thing. I can go to the other uh, objects in my, uh, you know, my back plate and I can add the same, do the same thing again. I can add a sketch to this one, uh, add a placement, an array of placement, and then do the, the same part design pattern feature and apply this same feature over onto another body. And, uh, and I can do that for as many bodies as I need and everything will remain uh, ready to go. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go with this because this video is already long enough. And uh, I'm documenting this as much for my future self as I am to put a video out here on the YouTube. If you found this useful, please leave a comment down below and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.